In this video, we are talking equal playing time. This is going to be all about how to select the right size squad, how to maximize game time for your players, and how to deal with all the headaches of giving every kid as much time on the pitch as possible. Remember guys, in these examples, they are all done with a rough accuracy because there's always going to be injuries and added time and stoppages in your game, which may affect minutes per child. You might have just brought a player on and within three minutes he gets injured and comes back off. But we are looking at the overall averages of how many minutes each player should get. And the numbers are really important because the nine aside tells us how many players are going to be in outfield positions, how many players are available in our squad, and how many minutes each player is then going to play. So we're going to use an equation to help us work out how many minutes everybody should get. So with nine positions and 60 minutes per player, that would give us a total playing time of 540 minutes. Now for this example, I'm going to do what is most commonly done in grassroots football, which is to take the goalkeeper out of the substitutions. So I'm going to minus his 60 minutes from the 540, that takes us down to 480 minutes of outfield playing time. The next part that we need to do is then use that 480 minutes and divide that by how many actual players we have available on the day. So imagine we have 10 players to play outfield positions, that's two substitutes and eight kids playing outfield. All we do is divide our 480 total minutes by the 10 players that we have available, and that equates to 48 minutes per player. So each outfield player should get 48 minutes on the pitch. But if we add one extra player to our squad selection, that gives us an extra substitute and takes us then down to 43 minutes per player. You can really simply do this on a calculator. So if I've got my 480 minutes, I divide that by how many outfield players I have available, and that gives me the total number of minutes that each player should play. Now, this same tactic does work for seven aside, nine aside, and 11 aside, even five aside. The only difficulty is if your goalkeeper isn't the only kid that's going to play in goal. So if you're going to be selecting a goalkeeper to play in the first half and maybe another kid to play in the second half, then you need to share those minutes out into your team. Now, the next part of the selection headache is how many players do I take to a game to guarantee maximum playing time with minimum fuss. Now, what I do is use this equation to work out how many minutes each player will get based on how many kids are gonna be available for the game on each day. But I have a minimum that I want each player to play. I don't like in my nine-a-side team for a player to play less than 40 minutes of game time. So if I end up with 13 or 14 or 15 players available, I'm going to end up with a player every time they come on the pitch that is guaranteed to play less than 40 minutes if we stick to this equal playing time. Now, when you consider the travel and the time and the effort that parents are going to make to get their child there to then play maybe 34 minutes of a game, is that really worth it? A lot of parents and a lot of coaches will probably consider that isn't sufficient playing time to then actually warrant them being at the game every single week. So instead, there is an alternative. Have a look at how we then try to manage the squad to maximize the playing time when each player is at the game. So for this nine-a-side game, I'm going to cap my squad size at 13 players. That gives me one goalkeeper whose minutes are taken out of the equation. It then gives me 12 outfield players to share out that 480 minutes. That gives me an average of 40 minutes per player, and that meets my minimum required game time of 40 minutes. The problem is I have 15 players available in my squad, and I'm only taking 13 to this game. How do we manage that as a coach? So the way that I like to do this is introduce a rotor system that allows you to schedule weeks off for players to cap your team at 13 players available. The reason that we do this is it means that it minimizes the time that kids are off the pitch attending matches, but just stood there as a substitute but it maximizes the time that they're actually on the pitch when they are available and selected for the game. So across the season, I need two players to miss every game to maximize that 40 minutes game time. Now, that will happen more often than not through injuries and through players not being available for various other reasons like birthdays and holidays and trips away. But on any weeks where I do have everybody available, then I ask two players to miss that week but the next week that they come to the game, they are guaranteed a minimum of 40 minutes on the pitch. You will actually find that parents are pretty happy sometimes to get the sleep in on a morning, to not have to travel and to get their games off to do family things instead of playing football. 
as well as that, it also maximizes the time that their kid is going to be on the pitch on the weeks when they do attend. They're minimizing that sub time and maximizing game time at 40 minutes average every single time they play. Now, at the start of the season, you can message every parent and let them know when your fixtures are scheduled, how many weeks there are available, and ask everybody to pick a week or two that they're going to miss throughout the season. They will have certain weekends where maybe for family reasons or a birthday, they're actually quite happy to miss one of your matches. That then makes your selections a lot easier and you can always let parents know that they don't have any particular weekends that they want to miss. Then you can choose it for them and just select it at random. You can even be clever as a coach and make sure that some of your strongest players aren't selected for weeks off when you know your fixtures are against some of the stronger teams, cup games, things like that, where it might be really important to the kids to try and get a win on those particular weeks. And if you give the choice to the kids and the parents, then I'm sure that they'll be unanimous in their decisions. Do you want to be available every single week throughout the entire season, but some weeks you might only get 30 to 35 minutes on the pitch out of a full 60? Or... Would you rather miss a couple of weeks across the full season, but guaranteed minimum 40 minutes plus more if there's any kids not available? And don't forget, if you've asked kids to miss a week, but you are struggling for selection, you've only got, say, nine or ten players available, and you really wanted a couple more than that, you can ask anybody who's been scheduled for a week off if they can actually make it to that game. And remember, that's just for a nine-a-side selection, but you can use the same calculations and we'll put them in the description below this video for how to select 11-a-side, 9-a-side, 7-a-side and 5-a-side. But with this same technique of how many maximum minutes have we got and how many players are we sharing that between for the outfield positions. So guys, we hope that video helps. We know how big a problem it can be when you're trying to maximize equal playing time, you're trying to manage the full squad, and you're trying to make sure that every kid gets as much time on the pitch as possible without lots of kids standing around as substitutes. Trust me, scheduling those weeks off can really help because the parents will be pretty happy to miss a week every now and again. The kids will mean that they're maximizing their playing time on the weeks when they are actually there. And it will minimize, especially through the winter, how many kids are just stood at the side of the pitch in the freezing cold, only getting maybe half an hour's game time. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you're not subscribed now, would be a great time to do so. And I will catch you in the next one. See you soon.